Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, but let me tell you why I was so calm in school because uh, I was I didn't understand what's going on because uh, <laughs> uh, my English now I can speak more, but at that moment I I couldn't. So <clears throat> I, I I think all of you I mean. As a new international student, it's, it's uh, language is, uh, uh, but but uh, uh, but the good thing is we were uh, we use drawing to, to, to communicate. So that's, that was uh, that's an easier part for me. Uh, the the topic for my lecture today is uh, <coughs> Shan Shui City. Uh, Shan Shui is a Chinese word. Uh, uh, means literally translate as a uh, mountain and water. Their nature element, but if you know Chinese culture, when you put Shan and Shui together, it representing kind of a, um, um, a culture that uh, you have a Shan Shui painting, Shan Shui music, Shan Shui design. You know all those. For example, Chinese gardens they're they're very different from the Western gardens. That's a new. Uh, that's a different way of thinking. And I put this log, this uh, image on the cover. You, you have a city which is so artificial, and the nature on the opp opposite side. And that's normally we we we, we think uh, when we create architecture, which is more about artificial uh, world. Um, so what's the relationship between the two? That's my uh, main um, concern. This is a, a photograph. Uh, done by one artist, uh, a Cai Guoqiang, who is uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, fireworks. If you know, he did uh, his solo show in Guggenheim. But this photo was taken in 1996, uh, when he just arrived in New York City, and he told me nobody knows him at that time, so he has to do something powerful, uh, so people pay attention to him. So he did this uh, uh, small. Smoke, uh, smoke uh, on this island, but because of the uh, perspective himself and the cloud looks so powerful. I, I think I think this is very. I mean, he and and the city beyond. You can see the twin tower was still there. It's very. You know, I mean, the 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 greatest um, city, uh, the greatest modern achievement by human being is not far away, and he's kind of uh, questioning that. What's the future of our city? And uh, this is the. Uh, <coughs> uh, this was my, my my work in school from from our uh, thesis project, and that was the uh, year 2000, uh, 2002, after 9 11 happened. At that moment, all the all the studios in school, all the students were proposing for the uh, World Trade Center, and that was my proposal. That's the the, the view from above. You can see it's uh, like a um, park. Um, uh, I I put the green, I put the water on top of this uh, structure, and the structure uh, it's this is like a, a floating building. Uh, of course, I put a couple column there. But uh, <laughs> it obviously doesn't support the building. But uh, as a student, uh, it, it's okay. It's, uh, 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 I, I remember we had uh, a st some famous structure engineer came to school. He said, uh, "Anything you draw, we can build it." So I, it's, it wasn't the main main uh, main concern. But the idea was to to propose something horizontal. Uh, it can even uh, connect a couple uh, high rises around the uh, around the site, and I, I I forget why I did this, but I, I always come back to look at this project because I, I remember I had the struggle what to what to do. Many people propose something uh, become monument or become like um, um, try to. Um, Try to create a, a memory for the old building, or some people try to create a future high-rise. But for me, it's not about um, uh, uh, single architecture. For me, I think it 
it was about relief. I, I feel New York is so dense. A lot of uh, uh, buildings try to compete the height, the space, the light. So I, I was thinking maybe I go up there and if just relief and uh, relax. And uh, you have a park up there, you can have a great view. But, but later on, people ask me, um, you cast a lot of shadow on other buildings. That was a surprise, uh, but I didn't, uh, <coughs> I, I didn't pay attention maybe, but, uh, but always I try to find um, uh, the, um, find, I try to uh, go back and try to find why I did the project like this when I wasn't mature enough. That's, that's very important to me because when you're not mature enough, you always do something from the instinct and, and uh, uh, even very emotional. Um, that, that was important. So I put this drawing always in my studio <laughs> until one day. Uh, I, I was hoping some client uh, want to build it. Uh, <coughs> and there are actually uh, five years ago, probably, uh, a client came to me and uh, he said, what is this? This is look fantastic. Uh, we had a two-hour meeting, uh, um, but later on I, I, I discovered he was talking about the, the building in front. <laughs> uh, this, <clears throat> uh, we we were young, uh, 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 we didn't have a project, uh, so uh, this actually, uh, it was about um, uh, creating um, a fish tank for those fishes. Uh, uh, so we, we were, we bought some fish and uh, we actually got a, a fish tank for free, which is a glass cubic. And we're thinking uh, uh, the, our architecture uh, look like uh, those free fish tank. Uh, they can keep uh, for free because the uh, the low cost, the mass production, the 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 uh, the, if, the the high efficiency during the, this whole production process make it cheaper. That's a, I think that's a logic between uh, behind all the modern product architecture cities. And, uh, and, and then we saw the, the cubic is not good, so we start to look at the fish. Uh, anyway, this is a very, um, uh, very um, theoretical process. And uh, we, 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 st we uh, observing how, f how fish behave in, in this cubic space. And then in the end, we, we, we transform this cubic space into something look like this. It's uh, still cubic, but start to melting and this uh, transform into another um, uh, thing. Uh, so, so we have a couple cubes, uh, a tubes go, uh, go through the cubic space, and then you have a, a space uh, more complex, and and the, and the surface continue from in and out, and then we produce this one into reality. This is a physical uh, fish tank, and then we put the fish in there. That's, that was almost the first project we did uh, when, when we had nothing to do and, uh, and, and we put this fish tank into uh, one um, architecture Binali exhibition because they invite us and we didn't have ar architecture. And we put a person there and uh, look like an <laughs> architecture model. Uh, and, uh, but the interesting is that the fish is bigger than human, and that they uh, it suddenly um, the the position is changed. And normally we look at the fish and uh, we think, oh, they're cute, or sometimes sometimes they die. Uh, uh, we we think uh, they're either lovely or, or they're they're uh, um, you know they don't speak, they don't know what they want, they don't. Uh, say what uh, what's a good fish tank, but what about the human being? Um, we talk, but we don't know what, what we're talking about. Uh, uh, we don't. Uh, we just accept a lot of uh, um, architecture as a product, and and a lot of housing, a lot of uh, architecture space 
very typical, very standard, and not designed for hum human being. So, so I think we, at the early stage, we pay attention to fish, uh, means um, uh, that, that was the moment we didn't have the, um, the developer came to us, we didn't have a client, but we want to pay attention to the users of the space, which is a fish. But uh, <clears throat> And then uh, when we move to the urban situation, that's, that's a, a Beijing photograph. Um, we used to destroy a lot of uh, old houses, but now we start to keep them. Uh, I think uh, the reason was they have a commercial va values. Co a lot of people come to see them. So there's a wall, you can see two different uh, landscape uh, on both sides. That's a, a public toilet because people live there still have a very poor quality uh, uh, living condition. That's a public space between cars and there's a, a to public toilet far beyond, uh, beyond. That's a hutong. But anyway, we, we did a, a, a proposal called Beijing 2050 uh, back in 2006 and we presented in Venice uh, when everyone talking about 2008 Beijing Olympics. We had uh, a lot of uh, grand buildings, monumental buildings, uh, huge urban plannings, but, but we were, we were uh, thinking maybe we do some small project uh, such as a toilet and insert them into the old neighborhood so people who live there, they can simply improve the, the living condition. So that was the idea. We took, uh, we took a survey uh, of a neighborhood and uh, we see who, you know, they don't have a toilet and we just find a corner or negative space in their courtyard and insert one. That was the idea. So, so, uh, so um, not, um, not just, uh, mm, um, this is not about architecture, it's about the neighborhood because a lot of uh, rich people, they start to uh, move in and uh, they will build a fake, uh, you know, sloping roof, all this. Uh, but we can keep a lot of uh, old houses uh, if the neighborhood, if people left, uh, they don't have a neighbor, they don't have a social um, um, structure there, then I don't think that makes sense. And uh, <clears throat> after the exhibition, um, there's, a, there's a guy who uh, saw the proposal and he uh, actually built one. And so this is one uh, real um, uh, toilet inserted into this small courtyard. It's very tiny, but we put uh, uh, a staircase above the toilet so you can go into this bubble and uh, walk up to the, to the roof. So that's a photograph. It's very small building. Inside you have a toilet, you have a natural light, a staircase. That's a, um, so I like this photo uh, quite a lot because um, the volume al almost disappear um, because the surroundings be, uh, reflected inside the volume and uh, twisted. Uh, it's kind of a reflect the reality, but in the very uh, different way. It doesn't copy the, the, the real surroundings. And, uh, <coughs> and that's a courtyard and, uh, and then trees around. It's very small. There's a, there's a neighbor, uh, complain about this and they, he, he's at, she's uh, from um, France. He loved Beijing, he lived in Beijing and he, she said, uh, why you do this? Uh, you don't know your history. Um, so she, she complained, but, but after we finished, she, she loved the project because maybe she couldn't see the project. Uh, it's a disappeared, uh, but she loved the, the courtyard a lot. 
And then I figure out the reason because this photograph, this is a, a view from the new house. Look at the, the courtyard. The courtyard, the courtyard doesn't change. And, and, and the, the bubble is on one corner. Uh, and then I, I remember this uh, famous Beijing writer already passed away, but he said the beauty of Beijing city was about emptiness. It's about, it's emptiness means the, the, the space inside the courtyard. So the building only define where, the, where people live, that, which is the, 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 the courtyards. And uh, he said, inside the courtyard, you have a tree, flower, birds, and life, and families. And so you have a, that's what architecture is about. And it's not about building themselves. So, so I was thinking, OK, then you can still do new building, old building, and, and, but, but as long as you start to you know, um, focusing on the, on the spaces. That's the reality in, in, in Beijing. You can see the bubble. It looks nothing like an old house, um, but I think it's fine. You have uh, some new and old together. Uh, but you can look at the, uh, some tower beyond. That's a second ring around the city. And you will have a third ring, fourth ring, fifth ring, sixth ring. So it's a very, very large city, and the building become bigger and bigger. How can we look at these two different urbanism? And in the old house, you have a courtyard trees, human scale. But in the large, uh, in, in the new cities, the large scale is hardly to, to, to imagine um, the human, how human can live in there. This are two photographs. Uh, New York and Tianjin. Yeah. Doesn't matter wh where Tianjin is, but uh, we have so many this kind of a city in China. Uh, the new area being developed uh, following North American large city topology. I, I, I think this was designed by American firm and the the the, the city official asked them to bring the Chicago typology master plan to, to, to here. It's, uh, but, but two cities happened in very different time. That was 100 years ago, but this, this is under construction. <clears throat> so question is, what's the different future? If we want to, we have to develop the, the new cities the new high-density urban um, situation. This is another case I found very interesting. Um, the building on the left uh, is in London, the tallest building in Europe. And on the right is a, a hotel in Co North Korea. And they have a very, architecturally, they're having similar profile. And, um, but that remind me the the Western church back in you know in old towns you have a lot of uh, pointing roofs and they are uh, they representing uh, religions you know, people, they're, they're the most powerful building or, or tall, tallest building but in these two cases they don't representing uh, religion they in the modern city. The modern architecture uh, becomes symbolic uh, for uh, power and capital. Uh, so a lot of high-rise building. Of course, some some place they, they need the density they, because the population. But this is another case in these photos. <clears throat> so, what modern architecture? What a high-rise supposed to mean in our modern cities? And we did uh, this two tower in uh, a city called Mississauga. It's, uh, it's, in, it's very close to Toronto in Canada. We won the competition um, to design the first one on the left. We, I did a very quick sketch. Um, it's not uh, 
vertical, not straight lines, or just something really random. And uh, we win the competition. Um, and uh, when we um, presented the design, and they, uh, they named this building Marilyn Monroe Building, because I think the, sh the shape, the curvature. And, and the curvature give a, a female feeling to the tower. Well, a lot of uh, high-rise representing men. They're so powerful. Right? They're, they're aiming height and they're showing the structure from outside. But that's not the case in this design. We only have horizontal balconies. It's shifting around. It doesn't show the strength uh, of the structure. And uh, the first tower, um, sold out in one day. It's all residential, 500 units. Um, so they asked us to design the second one. And then we had two. That's the floor plan, uh, very simple. We have a square core in the middle and uh, a, a oval shape plan and we rotate. But the rotation changes. Uh, the lower level, uh, each floor we rotate a little bit, and in the, at the middle part is rotate more dramatically. The reason why we're doing this is because we don't want to make a perfect uh, geometry. We don't want to make something look like a, a mechanical um, curve. We want to bring some natural feeling, some human um, you know, uh, touch to this geometry. And uh, we, when we have a two tower, that they have a different rules to rotate this uh, floor plan. In the end, they have a two different uh, profile. When you put two uh, unique tower together, they even create uh, very different relationships. And that's the space in between two tower. Um, actually, when we finished first one, they said, people love your, your tower, so we just copy one. Uh, you don't have to come, but we pay you ties. But we said, you cannot have a two Marilyn Monroe standing there. Um, <laughs> we need to make another one, uh, slightly different, because I remember a lot of Twin Towers, they're same. Because in the modern idea, you have a same floor plan repeat um, many, many times to become a tower, and then you repeat the whole thing again, you have two towers, sometimes you have three. They look so powerful. But if we want to make the building like nature, we don't, in nature, not, nothing is repeated. We don't want to repeat. And that's a, that's a view when you look down, you see all this, uh, because of the rotation, all the balconies um, slightly uh, shifted from uh, the other, and they have a more sunlight. It was a, a lot of uh, views uh, when you look at them from different uh, angles. And, uh, <coughs> oh, that's a um, re real um, uh, accurate geometry. There are two different buildings. Some cartoons on the local newspaper, on the social media. When, when building finish, people like to uh, take a photo and uh, interact with the building. I think that's uh, wonderful. We can even check the construction uh, process from the social network. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> back to China. One of the, uh, our projects in Huangshan uh, district, which is very beautiful. There's uh, no building in this photo. Uh, lake and mountain, super nice. And, uh, and then we pu put a building in there. It's actually uh, quite a, uh, criminal to put anything there. But um, mm, you know the, the urbanization in China, the, the, the population expanded into some new area. So this area is being developed. Um, instead of putting, copying piece of uh, urban Typology and the paste in this uh, context, we rather 
design the building on this land. So each building you can see is uh, extension from the, the hills. This is a topography, the, the contour lines. Each building have a different shape, different size, depending on where they are, where they're located, and they become extension of the mountain hill. That's a study model we, we did. <coughs> the section, we have a half building, half of the tower uh, uh, attached to the hill, and, and uh, another half on top of the hill. It's like ex extension of the hills. And every floor have a big terraces. You see the tea field on the site. So we continue these lines to the building. So each floor have a different shapes. And that's a photograph, that's a real photograph uh, uh, on the site, uh, the construction site. So each one have a different uh, height, different shape, and we try to make uh, uh, some community in between these uh, buildings. The lines, the curvature if in plan, they try to work with, uh, with the not, not only the, the, the land, uh, but also the trees around the building. So, so we, when we extend this cur curvature to each floor, they look like this. They, they move around, so uh, the result is the building doesn't have the clear geometry. It doesn't, you cannot, you, you cannot say this is a triangle or what. It's, uh, it's uh, sh floating around. <coughs> and I kind of uh, like um, the, free, the free lines, uh, it's not, of course, in, in this photograph, it shows some um, the construction problem, it, but for me, it's okay. It's a not perfect curve. Um, I didn't try to make a perfect curve. I want to make you know that a curve that you can only sketch once on paper and you cannot repeat again. Um, this is another case. Um, in Guangxi province, it's very southern China, and they have uh, these local mountains, very weird shape. And uh, we had a similar, we had a site uh, near that place, and that's my sketch. I, there's, a, there's a water, there's a, a ocean in front of our site. So I did a sketch. The first time I visited the site, when I look at the ocean, I thought maybe we should have a mountain here. But but our side was uh, empty, was uh, flat. And then we, we scan, uh, we scan that, that uh, hand drawing into computer and we draw this line and we, we make it a, a building. It look, uh, sounds, sounds very childish, but, but we decide to keep that in the end uh, because I mean, this curvature, uh, the, the, the profile of the building, somehow referenced the local landscape, but it was also different. Um, it's actually composed by several buildings, but, but from distance, it looked like a very, very long um, building. By pushing all the density program into one slab, we can free up the space in front. Actually, this is a very high dense community. There are totally 4,000 families in this community. When we have the, the, the green space in front of the building, the beach, the road, the public uh, space become um, connected to this, to this uh, landscape. And uh, that was uh, <coughs> even the urban road can go through the building. That's a section. You can see the water, the ocean, the beach, and then the podium, and then the, the building section. That's a photograph of one, phase one. Uh, 
you, you can see the, there is a big hole on the building to allow the, uh, the wind and, and sunlight go through. Actually, the whole ground level is lifted, also allow the people to passing through. Uh, on top of the building, you have a lot of balconies, terraces, so people can come out and see the ocean. That's one part of the building. You see the big hole, and that's a very, that's a concrete, uh, very thin concrete shell. Uh, there's a no trusses, no uh, long span structure behind, and there's a tennis court on the top, and people do mountain climb in the, in the hole on this concrete surface. It's, um, for me, it's, a, it's the first time we do the large-scale high-density residential project. Um, and and at, at each, each, each unit you see, you see uh, this, this unit is very small and the building has a quite a large scale. I keep asking myself, what's the difference um, that people living in this mountain, we call this fake mountain, or fake hill, what's the difference they live in this fake hill or a normal residential tower? That was my question, but um, people love it. The people who live in there, they think, oh, they live in the mountain and uh, look at the ocean. So what's uh, the nature mean in urban uh, situation? This is an, another building we, we built uh, in Mongolia, uh, Inner Mongolia, a city called Erdos. A lot of people heard of this city because on the, on the news, people call this ghost town because they built a lot of uh, towers and the residential, nobody lived there. Not enough people. Um, the first time I visit the site, I see desert. There's, there was nothing. And uh, I had to do something there. I, you know, in architecture school, you learn context. You know, you have to design. Um, uh, according to the context, but here we didn't know the context. I imagine some abstract object landed on a desert. That's what this image is about. Uh, see the landscape, this is actually hilly uh, uh, land. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no tree, no flower, no grass. I want to make very abstract landscape so people don't see anything familiar in the urban context. And this building also is very, I mean, um, it's metal, it's kind of a re uh, reflect the surrounding a little bit, um, but it's so alien, it doesn't um, have a symbolic meaning from outside, but it's just landed on this desert. Inside, uh, we have a huge space for this museum, and there are some cuts bring the nature light to the, to the hall. And there is a, a central lobby uh, through the building to connect the two entries on both sides of the building. And also, we bring in a, a lot of a natural light. It's a, it's a white. It's, uh, it's also abstract, but it reminds you the kind of uh, the Grand Canyon kind of space. And we put the bridges in there. Those bridges connect all the galleries on two sides. So people go into one gallery and come back to this public space and continue their journey to another side. There's another hall. Also, you see that the, there's a cut and the natural light coming in. There's a lot of na natural, natural light. And, and the holes, those holes, it's like, a, it's like a, the depths of the space. They, they look like a caves. So um, for me, I think 
I want to have uh, something so uh, um, unfamiliar, uh, those abstract holes, but at the same time, they're representing caves, desert, you know, all this landscape have been there forever from the past. So when you bring these two things together, something from the future, something from the past, and then you have this time gap in between where people will fill in because there's nothing they found familiar. So the, the, present, the, the present become absent. I think that's the whole museum about. It's about the time. It's about the space they can discover. Uh, not far from, it's quite far actually, it's, but it's northern China. Uh, we built uh, two buildings in this city called Harbin. It's a very cold place near the Russian border. It used to be the, the capital of uh, northern China. They, they have this uh, music festival, very famous, so they decided to build a, a opera house and, uh, and the cultural center. So you can see two buildings, the opera house already finished, and you can see the setting from this photograph. It's a, it's a, oh, it's a um, river front um, inside a wetland park. So all nature and a lot of uh, um, curved geometry on the landscape. So we decided to make this building blend into this um, nature context. That's a, that's a um, top view of the building. There are two parts of the building. One is a large opera. The other one is a small theater. And you see this continuous uh, bend uh, of the building facade become the ramp, become the bridges, become the landscape. And in reality, those are, uh, those lines on the facade, they're, they're the ramps. There's the pathway, so people can walk on the landscape and, and, and then they can continue uh, up to this building facade. Eventually they can uh, arrive, uh, they can reach the, the, the top where we have an amphitheater, outdoor space, and observation deck on the top. So you can see the building is uh, very tall because, because of the, the, the theater tower. But, but it's actually uh, blending to the, the horizontal. You can see the nature, and we did a whole master plan. Um, we keep all the nature. We actually enlarge the, the landscape around the building. They proposed three buildings, and uh, we win the competition by proposing to delete one building. We want to only do two to keep more nature. And that's a, one, that's a sky roof uh, of the opera. We want to bring in a lot of natural light. And uh, that's a facade of the building during the construction. <coughs> Those are pathways cut through the building facade. The city is not far. Uh, it's outside the, the wetland park. And so, so this building, it's, uh, it's a become part of the park, become, become part of the nature, but of, although it's all artificial. The interior um, has a lot of a natural light, same as at the other, build, uh, the other museum. You bring a lot of a light from above, also from the side. And when you are in this space, you look out to the, to the park. If you, um, you're, you're also in some kind of outdoor space because it's very bright. And we bring in a lot of uh, natural wood as a material. So, so the core of the opera look uh, quite uh, warm. And that's a grand stair, bring people to all the levels.
So inside auditorium, we also use a lot of the wood. Um, and then each seating, we, we, we create several seating pot uh, island. So, so we, we have uh, like some, some holes, some, some uh, space with the uh, depths. So, so visually, you, f you think this is a, a space about sound. It looks like a, a, a big instrument, a lot of uh, holes and, and uh, or organic uh, volume. We even bring in the nature light to this auditorium. This is very hard because, the, because of the acoustic requirement. But from the back wall, we have this uh, lights, wash the wall, and there's a glass um, seating pot floating up there. So that's a detail. A lot of the wood, um, the, wood the wood was local, but the construction, we use a lot of manpower. They're handmade. Uh, so you can see from outside that the geometry, the lines, the metal were, were all computer controlled. The, co the construction was quite uh, advanced in terms of technology, but interior we want to bring in the, the human touch. So people see the smaller scale and uh, how people craft the details. And that's a lobby space. The, the stair lead you to the lower level where the the parking is, and that's a, um, that's a lobby to the small theater. And we put a, a white wall, and uh, you can see the shadow moving on the wall. So that's a, that's a, a hole uh, lead you into the small theater. Inside the small theater, it's very simple space, but uh, we have the, 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 the backdrop of the stage open to the outside. And uh, the both walls, uh, there are concrete walls, but we, have, we, we apply this uh, waterway pattern on the wall. It works uh, for the acoustic, because it's bumping back the, the sound. Um, at the same time, you, you can visualize the waves from the, you know, from the sound or from the, the water outside the building, from the landscape. <coughs> We're also uh, designing another music hall, in music, a concert hall in, in, in Beijing. This, this is uh, the building. Um, uh, next to the stadium, actually. The noise control is really hard. <laughs> uh, so we try to make building, you can see the, the, the free shape. Uh, again, it's like um, a curtain uh, f um, flowing in, 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 in the wind. And inside, we have a wood uh, shell. So there's a, a translucent skin will bring in a lot of natural light uh, during the day, and in the evening, it, it glows from inside, the, the warm color. And inside the auditorium, inside the concert hall, uh, we try to put a, a clear edge uh, in between the seating and wall. So the, so the wall uh, is all white. We can project different images on the wall. So we can even create an outdoor feeling to the space. So we're, we're, when you are uh, having this concert, this show in the city center in Beijing, you can create another space, another time, another location um, to, to create another different atmosphere. Those are technical things. And there's another museum we're building in Fujian. It's a very beautiful site. There's an uh, ocean, some small island. And we built a, uh, this museum I, as an as island. It's, it's not a building. It's like a, a, a new weaving land 
connect to the mainland through a bridge. And uh, you can, I think, you can see the you can see the surrounding um, some similar hills, hills uh, island, and we try to make similar geometry. So th this place belongs to the location, belongs to the, this place, but at the same time is so different feeling. So people come to here, um, they don't necessarily go into one exhibition, they already feel this is not now, this is not, a, you know, this is not Euro. So this become a, a new kind of a public space. For example, uh, this is how building um, blend into the water. It's like a beach. But same, same thing happened to all the islands. But when you make this artificial, it's a, it has a different meaning. This is uh, the space in between the, the volumes. <coughs> Inside the building, we have the spaces also look like uh, caves. I don't know why I like caves so much, but they just look abstract at the same time. So, I mean, they have nothing to do with the boxes. They, well, I mean, why are we doing cubic space? And uh, this is uh, the current, uh, the construction stopped, but they um, have the island already. For me, it's enough. Um, people can go there and, uh, uh, as a public space without program. Anyway, this is a, um, a photograph of uh, nature. I talk about nature a lot. Um, this is all artificial. The French garden, Chinese garden. In Chinese garden, uh, you have uh, many elements, water, rock, trees, and architecture. But architecture uh, was never become independent subject. In the garden, a garden is a one concept. A garden was about living, was about poetic living, but was about literature, was about emotion. And uh, each tree has a meaning. In French garden, what would happen if one tree died? I, I heard they replace the tree, right? They, they want to keep the, the clean geometry because overall layout is more important. That's a very different way to look at the nature. Um, for the urban scale, they're all, they're, there's also different. The photo on the right, is uh, Beijing city. You can see the square, uh, that's the Forbidden City. The inside the Forbidden City, you have a lot of uh, courtyards, but outside the Forbidden City, you see the nature um, parks. You see the lake, you see the bridge, uh, the island, the hill, the pagoda on the hill. Those are um, artificial landscape. This is a huge scale. Um, urban scale. And you see the small houses, people actually live around this beautiful landscape. I mean, for the small garden, people understand this is a private, this is for rich people. Uh, but this concept, this philosophy, when this philosophy become applied to a larger scale, it's an it's a open space, it's a public space, a urban space for everyone. And uh, there are a lot of uh, beautiful sceneries in the city. It's uh, not only about traffic, function, building, density. It's about uh, the beautiful settings. Um, I like Central Park as well, but you can see the difference. You can see how we look at, in, uh, how we look at the nature. The, the nature on the, on the left it's, it's uh, isolated. It's a great place to go, but it's a different thing from artificial. 
in the man-made environment, we talk about different things. We talk about efficiency, we talk about traffic, all this. Well, that's not the case in the right uh, photograph. What if we apply this uh, photo, uh, we apply this, job, uh, this philosophy to a future city? Because in, in this part, uh, we don't have a, a density like New York City. Um, but what if we, we do a future city with the high rises, but uh, we treat them as a, as a one experience? Uh, we, we put the nature and, and the building as one thing. We did a couple projects like that. This is the one model we made for a, a, a development in Nanjing. It's a, a quite a large, um, large development, uh, totally 13 towers. That's uh, the rendering of the project. So we had to unify all these towers, no matter what's the um, program. We put the louvers outside, they're the sun shading system, and they have different height, different uh, volume, but doesn't matter, they become um, um, a background. And then we create this water and, and the village feeling and this, uh, this a uh, smaller scale um, environment in the middle. And we fill in the density, we fill in a lot of land, so we have a totally different scale in between the towers. When people enter the place, they only feel the you know, smaller building around them and, uh, and then trees, so they don't really um, realize there are big buildings around. Um, that's a different photograph. Each building um, in this high rise, we create uh, um, this sky lobby every three level. Uh, actually, it's a, the elevator only stops every three level, and they will walk. Uh, they will take a stairs one floor up or one floor down. So they just walk. So these three level become a, a community. So people live in the high rise, they can still know each other and meet each other and uh, communicate. Um, and now this building, this, this uh, place is under construction and uh, we'll see um, if we can have this at high density uh, urban place and the nature and the village, human uh, together. That's the louvers. Here's another one in Beijing. You know, this look like a, a sliding rock, right? This, it's, it's an architecture model. Um, we put in the water and the uh, most. It's, it's located in on the edge of uh, uh, Chaoyang Park, uh, which is the largest park in Beijing. You can see the CCTV tower, all this tower uh, become stronger and stronger. But our building uh, look like a part of the nature because try to, you know, try to stop the, the edge of the building. <coughs> this this was a painting, oil painting, done by a Chinese architecture critic. He often draw the, you know, the, the, the modern architecture into the old tra traditional Chinese painting, and you always found the conflict. You know, the, the building doesn't fit into the context. But in this drawing, he put our building in there. It looks so fit. <laughs> Look like a, a, a real mountain. Maybe that's a problem, it looked too much like a mountain. But that's a, <coughs> that's a rendering. And uh, we uh, create uh, many small buildings also uh, near the, the tower. So you, you, uh, you, you, again, you, you, you create this uh, very intimate uh, valley or village feeling space near the, the big development. 
as a lobby in between the two towers. <clears throat> That's a construction site. Um, you find a lot of um, s some vertical lines, fins, and then the curved the glass in between those lines. Those lines, they're a structure, column, and they follow the geometry vertically. <coughs> and in between, behind each line, it's an it's a, it's a air tunnel. It's a, it's a, let me find, each fin is an air tunnel inside, so that the cold air go in and release from the top. Each floor can open a window inside this tunnel, uh, towards the tunnel, so th to bring in the, the, the clean air. That's under construction. Uh, this one, it's a, <coughs> it's a rendering uh, of a, a museum we just uh, were designing in Chicago uh, for George Lucas. It's a, uh, it looked like a very, uh, it's like, like a tent, tent or, or, or mountain or whatever, or, or volcano, but you see the location, it's not far from here, the site, it, you see the vertical towers already. Um, but the site is near the nature, and we're thinking uh, we create uh, this platform near the water to connect all the surroundings, and uh, to connect the, 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 green, the green area around the building, and then and then this platform start to um, pump, pump out, pump up, so become uh, some vertical structure. So it's something in between the horizontal and vertical. And, and uh, on the top of the, the structure, there's an um, observation deck, there's a restaurant open to public, and this, there's a ring floating up there when you go to the roof, you will um, look at the sky. Actually, there's a, there a big dome inside the building. When you enter uh, into this big dome, it's like a very classic uh, space. You know, there's a huge dome, and people can take the ramp outside the dome, along the dome, and lead you to all the galleries on each level. But on top of the dome, there is a hole bringing the, 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 the nature light. And there are three theaters also in the, in the building and one library there. So the ground floor is quite large. So you can see um, this is a new typology to the city. It's, uh, it's in between horizontal and vertical. Um, it's trying to blend into the landscape, and uh, it's abstract, so it's a free form, and uh, it's uh, uh, mysterious. So people try to go in, and they know, they, they see what's happening on the top, and they, they can go in there and then walk up, then they can on the journey, they can discover a lot of things. And again, this is about the time. This is about um, um, the environment around the building. Um, so sometime, I think, uh, this is a perfect location, because uh, I, I remember I, uh, I did my internship, one of my internship in Chicago, and we all learned modern architecture there. Go back to the first image, I talk about the cubic space, talking about the modern philosophy. And in, in some of my projects, I try to criticize the modern philosophy uh, or trying to um, uh, development from, from modern philosophy, which we all learn from school. And this is a, 
this is a place I think to have a, a, a dialogue between us and the modern uh, uh, modern uh, asset we have. The great city is there, but what about the future? If the past was about religion, um, the modern city was about capital, um, power. Now we're talking about nature and human. Mm, so what about the future? If we're talking about human, about nature, I think we should be uh, talking about people's emotion or their spirit, um, what they feel about the environment. Um, so I didn't really, uh, some of my building shows um, maybe they deal with the environment, they deal with the green technology, sustainability, but I didn't really talk about those things. I think I try to, uh, during this process, I try to pay attention to myself, to my emotion, to my instinct reaction to a certain place, certain culture, so, so that the architecture I create probably also um, has an emotion in there so people can feel that. Um, thank you very much.